brief bit of history of the tilt casting process probably wouldn't hurt. It was started in France when around 1900 they were having a little bit of bother uh, making aluminium bronze coins. The uh, surface finish they were getting was absolutely terrible. They traced this to problems of oxide skins in the ingots that they were rolling to make the uh, sheet that the coins were made from. And typically, of course, an ingot mould, sit an ingot mould there like this, and they get a, a crucible full of metal here, and they just simply pour it straight into the ingot mould, and you get all this splashing and plopping and all sorts of folding in. And what this does is mix oxide off the surface of the metal and generate more from all the air bubbles that it drags in so that you wind up with a metal absolutely full of oxide skins. Now when they tried to roll these ingots half the time bits of the ingot go this way and bits that way and even if it didn't there was enough of this film in the eventual sheet they rolled to mar the surface of the coins and these films go right through the metal. Now a bloke called Derville came along and he was a bit smarter than the average foundryman and he decided that he'd do it differently. He set his crucible up like this, full of his molten bronze. Then he stuck an ingot mould up here over the top of it. And having got it there like that, he then slowly rotated it more or less about a point there and as the die slowly tilts back, the metal here slowly runs into the die, so that when you get to sort of that sort of a position, you wind up with metal sort of about there. And as you tilt it a bit further, you wind up with metal about there. Eventually, you wind up with metal down here. But if you do it carefully enough, the metal just sort of gradually unfolds and rolls down as a wall and there's no splashing there's no plopping so he managed to produce ingots that were totally free of oxide they could roll it into sheet and they could make their coins now in the 1960s a company in america called style decided that this was a good way to make castings but they unfortunately yeah they didn't quite do it as well as derville would have liked um, what they did they set a mould up like this, some sort of cavity in it. They set it up horizontally. And then they set a basin up here. And they filled the basin full of metal, you know, to about there or whatever. And then they tilted it all back around about that point again. Doesn't matter much where. And they thought this was equivalent to Derville's process, but unfortunately it isn't. First of all, with the metal down sort of there, by the time that metal starts to enter the die, the whole lot's at about this angle. Whoops, a daisy, about there. So the metal hurtles down here and splashes and plops and you're back to square one. Clever people now have investigated the process properly and they have come to the conclusion that this basin has to be the right size. First of all, let's draw our die again. And the die has to be, to start off, like this. And the basin needs to sit here. And you fill the basin up to that level. When you start to tilt this back, the metal is always almost trying to run uphill into the die, but as it just slowly, slowly goes down, you again get back to Derville's process where the metal rolls in as a nice fill, as a nice uh, wall, if you like, and there's no splashing, there's no entraining of the oxide film, and if you do this correctly, you wind up with an extremely good casting. Unfortunately, most people don't do it correctly. They tend to do it this horrible way, and they do get, as a result, quite unreliable results. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. And unfortunately, the machines that are commercially built to hold the dies and the basin and all that sort of stuff and do the tilting, many of them, most of them, ones I've seen, in fact, don't allow the die to start there. It can't start anywhere 
beyond horizontal and that is just wrong so very very wrong and if you look on youtube you'll see tilt casting machines and sure enough they always start there sometimes even back there to make things vastly worse but it needs to start there the basin needs to be the right size and it needs to be filled up here now i'll move the camera and i'll show you my little setup for doing this This is my little setup for doing the tilt casting in. Firstly, there's one of the two extra blocks that I cast, and there's the other one sitting here. These form the top half of the die, and they've got the feeder cavities cut into it. There's been a little bit of machining done on the dies, obviously. I've cleaned that face off, cleaned this face off, and then machined these and drilled uh, a couple of dowel holes with the two halves bolted together. Put those out of the way for the moment. And here is the die block itself that we made. You can see the two cavities. Uh, it's had a little bit of machining done on it. The top here has been machined. The two front and back faces, a few holes drilled and tapped, and the dowels put in place. And the idea here is simply that <coughs> We have the two top die halves in place and they're just held in by over centre clamps. Now, get those into place. And then this is simply picked up into this position, turned into this position and locked. At this stage, I ladle the metal into these two. And if I've done it right, if I've sized everything correctly, the metal when it's got the right amount in here to fill the cavity and the feeder will in fact be maybe an inch or so up into the feeder uh, and it can't run any further because the feeder of course is slightly canted uphill as, is, as are the cavities then I simply flick the lever and it will tilt back under its own weight and pour the metal into the two cavities after somewhere between a minute and two minutes depending I simply do this move these two back out of the way pick the two castings out with a pair of tongs move these two back into place again swing it back into the horizontal or a bit more than the horizontal position uh, and flick the lever and away it'll go again now the speed with which it goes back is fairly important um, and I control that with a dash pot here. It's just a cylinder that's full of the thin oil and it has a bypass here that comes through a, a tap. Now, when the piston cylinder moves as it's moving now, the only way the fluid can get from the bottom of the cylinder to the top is via this tap. So I can control how fast that fluid is, is allowed to uh, move. Um, the cylinder has a sort of quick action valve in, in the piston inside it so that it's easy to lift up. Now, I can also control the speed by adding weight here so that the weight will cause it to tip back quicker and I can also control it by altering the viscosity of the fluid in the cylinder. I can make it, I can thin it down with kerosene or WD-40 or something just to make it a bit thinner. Now the machine itself was just built out of whatever I had to hand at the time. Um, two and a half inch by uh, inch and a quarter steel square welded together uh, and with a bit of angle iron as the uh, main support for the die in here, a bit of angle iron in here um, and some fairly crude pivots. Very, very easy to build. The only thing you need to have of course is a reservoir here for extra fluid because as the rod goes down into the cylinder the total volume of the cylinder gets less so there has to be somewhere for the extra to go and that's really all there is to it. The only thing that uh, is perhaps notable is that these feeder cavities here have been coated with a, um, 
a refractory uh, in order to give them some insulation uh, and to slow the solidification down in these. The cavity of course will be sprayed up with dye sprays just before I use it and we will see all that happen um, shortly I guess. But it's a piece of cake. Perhaps a quick uh, view sideways mightn't hurt while we're at it. It'll give a bit of a better idea perhaps of how the, the whole system works. Metal in here, trip the lever, and down she goes. Now, uh, I can, as I said, I can slow it down. We shut this tap off here on the bypass to the cylinder. So it virtually doesn't move at all, or I can go very, very slowly, or a bit quicker. Or a lot quicker and, and again it, adding weight to there will obviously make it go quicker but the casting removal simply back there back there pull the castings out put the two die bits back again and we're ready for the next two castings I guess you get a, a somewhat clearer view of the cylinder and how it works here, but um, really there's nothing to it. It's a very simple process, but it does need to be done correctly. And one of the important things, and hopefully you can see it on the camera, this die is sitting up at an angle. It's not sitting horizontally at all. It's canted this way. Uh, and that is quite, quite important that it's, it's done like that.